Stefanie Weber. Woo! Fourteen years ago, my mom and me were yeah, chatting about our dreams and she realized she wouldn't be able to realize all of them. After a long fight against cancer, my mom died. My dream was to live one year abroad and to discover how creativity works in other cultural contexts. And not only by going like, on a long vacation, but really immerse myself into another culture and experience it from the ground up. So, my dad gave me this book, Latin American Graphic Design, and I looked through it and like all the main artists I liked were from Buenos Aires, Argentina. So, I bought a plane ticket to Buenos Aires. I quit my job, sold and gave away all my stuff. And yeah, actually my father bought the plane ticket for me because uh, <laughs> he was supporting me unconditionally and encouraged me. When I quit at work and explained to my colleagues why, so many of them was, were telling me that they shared the same dream of living abroad, but that they weren't brave enough to really do it. But to be honest, in this moment, I didn't feel really brave. It was, I don't know, it was a kind of state of resignation. I just thought, what's the worst thing that could happen? Like, the worst things just happened to me. What's the worst thing that could happen? It's that I don't like it in Argentina, and then I just come back and live a while with my dad until I find a new job. That sounds actually really nice. And, yeah, as you know, in Germany, we have social securities that support you as well, so that's... I didn't feel brave, just really privileged. When I arrived in Buenos Aires, yeah, I was overwhelmed. I lived in a hostel the first days, crying every night, and I realized that I didn't know anyone in this entire continent. So how would I find a job and meet people and make friends? And even, I thought I can't speak Spanish because I learned it in school, but in fact, I didn't know that before, the Argentine Spanish is labeled as the most distant one to European Spanish. They even conjugate verbs differently. So I was like, okay. Yeah. But I grew beyond myself. I found a shared apartment to live in within three days. I, shy, introverted girl, yeah, I went, went to a hostel party to meet people. And I met Kimber. She was the opposite of me, fearless, outgoing, brave. She, it was her first day of leading the pub crawl in Buenos Aires. Do you know that kind of pub crawl where you go from bar to bar and then everybody gives you a shot? She was Canadian, didn't speak a word of Spanish, just hola. And she got this job while dancing on the table in Greece while traveling, so I was really impressed. <laughs> And she became my lifesaver a year after, but more on that later. She introduced me to the couchsurfing community, which was really active in Buenos Aires. So this community of backpackers, digital nomads, uh, just yeah, people hungry for life, were like a second family for me. So my first learning, in every situation, there's something positive that helps you to grow and learn. Yeah, how did it went in South America? I found a job uh, in a really wonderful design agency. Actually, the font used here, Chaco, it's designed from Ruben Fontana, the founder of this design agency. If you like typography, you should definitely have a look into his work. I found my husband. That was the unplanned part. <laughs> and not, e not only stayed one year in Argentina, but two more in Colombia. He is Colombian. And I traveled through a whole, yeah, a lot of countries. So, who of you likes to travel? Please raise your hand. Okay, that's nearly everyone. <laughs> so, I would like to ask, yeah, Franzi. <laughs> I remember you uh, traveling the world just before the pandemic. Can you share maybe like one special moment of your travels with me, with us? Um. One special moment out of six months. Well, that's a tough question. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Um, actually, it doesn't have to do much of the travel or the countries itself. It's more about the, like, looking at it retrospectively about the braveness and courage that I actually did it. So stepping into this uncertainty, what it's going to happen. Um, starting in South Africa, being a blonde Western German girl and doing it all on my own was like the first thing. Um, but yeah, so it's actually dealing with the uncertainty throughout six months and what's happening. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I also asked my team tomorrow, no, not today, in the morning. So what was, was one of the best experiences you remember when traveling? I met my future wife, okay, another one. <laughs> Finding me, my first dive underwater, sunset above the clouds, I felt freedom. Yeah, as you notice maybe, the, yeah, the thing about traveling is, you remember the moments that were, where you outgrew yourself, they, where they are tricky when you experienced something for the first time, you tried a different food you never tried before, like these really special moments and the connection to people. I don't see there that everything works out as, as planned or I was happy about the fast booking confirmation or something, right? That's, yeah. So when I remember my travels, I remember Paraguay. That's a transport ship I traveled on for four days. And uh, after one night, hard night, sleeping on the floor, I finally got a hammock to sleep on for the next days. It was actually exactly the hammock um, hanging yeah, where, the, where the stairs are. <laughs> Nobody wanted it. <laughs> yeah. Then we moved on um, to the middle of Paraguay, the Chaco, it's called this area. And this is the only road going through that, and it turned into mud. So we had to ask for shelter from a farm family and stayed there for a few days. And they welcomed us really, really with their open hearts and gave us shelter. And they had even, yeah, not even water or electricity. And they're so kind. I, I didn't even have money left to pay them. I stood there with my stupid plastic bank card in the middle of the jungle that felt, felt quite useless. I remember Bolivia. So the impressive landscape that took my breath away literally, at 4,000 meters high Salt Lake Ojuni. I remember Colombia, where I had a car accident in the middle of the Caribbean jungle. You remember Kimber? Uh, yeah, she saved my life because she found me. And the two guys supporting me, yeah, um, trying to get me out of the hillside, supporting me left and the right, cutting the jungle away with their big knives. Because my whole left side was broken from ribs to collarbone. I couldn't walk alone anymore. So, my second learning is that you can plan, but you still have to be prepared for the unexpected. And not only in extreme situations like these I mentioned, also in normal everyday life. So, for example, yeah, this is Bogota, a really, really big city. And the daily traffic struggle is real. As you see here, this is the bus system in Bogota because there is no subway. It's called Transmilenio, but the people call it Transmilleno. Lleno means full. Yeah, so getting from A to B is quite challenging. In Buenos Aires as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the Guillaté, remember it was 2009, no smartphone, no apps, and this was the booklet that helped you from getting from A to B, and I will explain to you how, and look at it maybe from a usability perspective. So, <laughs> first, you have to know the name of the street where you are, and look it up in the very front, in the alphabetical index. Then it would give you a page number and coordinates, such as page 16, A4. Then you go to that page. When you have it, you try to get the finger on there. Then you have to know 
the name of the street where you want to go, go to. You have to hold the finger in the page, go to the very front, again, look for the street, and it's another page and another coordinate, such as, I don't know, page 18, B2. Then you have to flip back and forth and find a bus line in the co yeah, coordinating grid on the other side, if there's a bus line that drives through these two locations. If yes, you're lucky, if not, you have to walk more or find two buses, but there's no transfer system, so you have to pay twice. So if you have a bus that drives by these two locations, then you go on the really back, so here, where all the bus lines are. You see like an image of the bus there on the right, because every bus line has its own image, uh, like, like, like its own design, so it's recognizable. And here, it would say all the street names where the bus drives on. That's not the um, steps where they really are yeah, holding on, but it's the streets they're driving on. And be careful, as all the streets, nearly all the streets are one way, Ida y Vuelta, so going into a turn, would be different streets. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, all, I'm also a really structured person. I like to plan, I like to be prepared, I like to be on time. So you imagine that I had a really hard time in South America. Um, it was hard, but also a little bit healing, because yeah, I learned that I don't have to plan everything, nor can I. I learned that ahorita can mean now, in 10 minutes, tomorrow, or never. I learned that there are different approaches to do things, and that this is okay. I closed the South America chapter with a quote. Our anxiety does not come from thinking about the future, but from wanting to control it. Actually, I tried to control it desperately, um, painting in Google Earth the bus lines that I may need. <laughs> yeah, so how does that help me today, navigating through uncertain times? As mentioned before in the two talks, the safe space. To have a safe space is so important. When I remember 2008, when I was working in that advertising agency, talking to my creative director about my mom being sick, he told me, don't worry, if you have to travel suddenly to see your mom a last time, then just do it, don't hesitate. We are not doing open heart surgery here, we are just doing advertising, so, yeah. And if it was my family or the couch surfing community who always supported me, and my husband's family who welcomed me like a daughter, that to have that security behind you is everything. And did you know that Google did a study on what makes a team really successful in 2015? And the main important key factor is psychological safety. So my third learning is make your team a safe space. Where everyone is allowed to be who they are in all their differences where you can rely on each other and don't hesitate to ask for help, where you can be crazy sometimes and just dare to be yourself. I joined Fieldman in 2001 in pure lockdown in winter. The team was also partly new, so they haven't worked together in a normal working situation in the office all the time. So the first thing we did was a team workshop. We talked about our values, our goals, our purpose, how we want to work, work together. And I'm really sure that this was one of the success criteria of our team spirit today. Even the people joining afterwards uh, experienced this team spirit and could find their way into the team much more easily. So, when you have the safe space as a foundation, what comes next? In a world that seems to have gone crazy due to pandemic, pandemics and war, we want to make sense of our work. We want to understand how we contribute to the bigger picture. And if, at the same time, the company itself is going through a huge, huge transformation, it can be really challenging. So how do you motivate employees to shape the future with you? We build an experience vision. We heard in the before about experience visions as well. 
So what is experience vision? It's a possible future customer experience and like a North Star where you can align all your products and roadmaps, roadmaps too. It aims to inspire and to motivate. How did we do that? We did a research on our current customer experience because only if you know where the pain points are, you can improve them, right? We developed a holistic understanding of the needs, pains, and wishes of our customers, and based on that, we created an inspiring vision. In our case, it's a series of illustrated videos. But it can be anything. So, for example, Airbnb hired a Pixar animator to illustrate key moments in the customer journey. Or Google, that was 2007, made a comic book explaining what is Google Chrome. And maybe the most famous one is the Apple Knowledge Navigator. It's five minutes long. You should definitely have a look onto it. It's from 87, and it illustrates how a professor in his home office is interacting with video calls and voice user interface tools. That helped Apple to communicate a new conceptual model and user experience that was far away from the current day reality. So the first learning is create a CX vision as a North Star. And last but not least, stay curious and embrace the uncertain and see it as new opportunities to, do, to learn and to do better. Will you fail? Yes. Will you ye learn? Hell yes. <laughs> So don't be afraid to be there with all your heart. You can only win. And all feelings are okay, also the bad ones, because that's human. So my message for you is create a safe space, set up a North Star, and with a good dose of curiosity, you will get there. Maybe not as you initially planned, but for sure a lot smarter and rich of experiences and learnings. So I will close with a quote from Steve. You can't, look, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backward. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Believing that the dots would connect down the road will give you confidence to follow your heart even if it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference.